To begin our discussion, I welcome to the podium, Mary Molinero. Thank you, Jen, and thanks to everyone for coming today. The theme of this year's Open Access Week is Generation Open. As Heather Joseph, executive of the sponsoring agency, the Scholarly Publishing and Academic Resources Coalition, known as SPARC, stated, this year's theme reflects the importance of putting our future scholars and researchers at the core of the shift to an open system of scholarly communication. Graduate students now are entering a very different professional world than those researchers that came before them. It is the graduate students and the early career researchers that will have the most impact and benefit most from the open access to research. In order to have open access to research, the results of research and the data that supports it must be made open. So really, what does that mean? Open access publishing. Authors can choose to publish their research articles in a growing number of journals that meet the full definition of open access. Articles are free to all who are interested readers, and the publishers place no financial or copyright barriers between readers and the article. Open access publishing is the fastest growing segment of the scholarly publishing market. And journal options are now available for nearly every area of research. Here at UK, we host a number of open access journals through UK Knowledge, our institutional repository. And in regard to digital repositories, authors can choose to deposit their research articles in digital archives, often called digital repositories or institutional repositories, which conform to the standards of the Open Archives Initiative, OAI and enable readers to freely access and fully reuse the article text. This allows any author to make their work available under open access conditions, regardless of the journal the article is published in. Our institutional repository is, again, UK Knowledge. Many authors do not realize that they often sign away the rights to their own work when they sign agreements to publish in commercial journals. There are tools available to help authors understand open access and how to publish their work under full open access conditions. This is often a big surprise to researchers as we have these conversations with them and as they try to use copies of their articles to put on reserve and to distribute to their class you know, often they don't own the, the copyright for their own articles. Institutions that support research from public and private research funders to higher education institutions can implement effective policies that support making open access to scholarly research articles the default mode for their researchers. We've had conversations about this at UK, but we have not implemented this campus-wide. And so, how is this change impacting the way research is conducted? Traditionally, journals have been sold on subscription to libraries. In the age of print on paper, this was the only model available that enabled publishers to disseminate journals and to recoup the cost. Unfortunately, this meant that only researchers and institutions that could pay to the subscription charges were able to read the journal articles. Except if you got them on interlibrary loan, of course. Even wealthy universities could only afford a proportion of the world's research literature. For institutions in poorer countries, this proportion is even tiny or non-existent. Open access has the potential to fundamentally change the way research is conducted, shared, and funded, and built upon. There is global momentum for research to be conducted with more transparency allowing for an escalation in the speed at which research is built upon other research. Federal funding agencies have for some time been feeling the pressure to be accountable to taxpayers, as we all know. We, why should the public pay for duplicative data collection and for research to be sequestered away behind paywalls in expensive journals? This hampers the research process and slows down innovation and collaboration. 
Research funding agencies are now not only requiring that research data be managed using best practices, but are, all, are now also requiring that research data be shared along with the published results of that research. So what really are the carrots and the sticks with this? The big stick is if the plans for managing and sharing the results of data are not planned for and carried out, the researcher risks not receiving future funding from that agency. When these um, policies were first put into place, everybody got a pass, pretty much. Um, the review panels didn't realize what a good data management plan was, and they weren't really being held to it. That has changed. Um, grants are being set aside if they don't have good data management plans, and now data sharing is also a, a component of that uh, equation. Compliance is not an option. This is critically important to the university, our programs, and to the individual researchers. Now, there are some carrots, too. For researchers, this means better visibility and higher impact for their scholarship. Studies have shown a significant increase in the citations when articles are openly available. There's also avoiding duplication. No researcher really wants to waste time and money conducting a study if they know it's been attempted elsewhere. But duplication of effort is all too possible when researchers can't effectively communicate with one another and make results known to others in the field and beyond. Research is really useless if it's not shared. Even the best research is ineffectual if others aren't able to read it and build upon it. When price barriers keep articles locked away, science cannot achieve its full potential. And an area that's really growing rapidly uh, these days is text mining. Today, millions of articles are published every year, so many that a researcher could only hope to read a small subset of the articles in a given field. Text mining could be very beneficial by giving researchers an overarching view of a particular field and uncovering trends and connections within their own field and, se and between seemingly unrelated fields that no human researcher could discern. For doctors, more knowledge leads to better outcomes. Physicians need access to a wide variety of current and high quality medical information to make the best decisions for their patients. And patients and their advocates need and deserve access to the corpus of medical research. Imagine that you've been, just been diagnosed with a serious illness. After talking to your doctor, you would probably want to investigate the medical literature your, yourself to compare possible treatments and better understand your situation. However, you almost certainly find yourself unable to access the vast majority of medical journals without a subscription or spending up to $30 for each article. Patient advocates are some of the strongest supporters of open access because they see firsthand how crucial access to the latest research is to doctors, patients, and medical researchers. Entrepreneurs. Access to the latest research speeds innovation. Price barriers prevent small businesses from accessing and utilizing cutting edge research. And as far as the public goes, there's a return on our investment. Making research publicly available as soon as possible will allow other researchers to build on new ideas as soon as they're published. While in the current system, these ideas might be, remain locked away and unable to advance the state of the field. To have the greatest possible impact, the research we fund as taxpayers must be made available to the largest possible audience to make use of and build upon new ideas. As taxpayers who pay for much of the research published in journals, we have a collective right to access the information resulting from our investment. Science works on an open exchange of ideas. Open access provides that. Open access drives the egalitarian distribution of scientific information. Open access has the potential to fundamentally change the way research is conducted, shared, funded, and built upon. The digital environment poses new challenges and provides even more opportunities in the sharing, reviewing, and publishing of research results. In short, it will make better science and better scholarship. Thank you.